Base44 versus Replit. Which one of these tools is the best? Today, we're gonna to be putting them head to head and seeing which one of them is better at, in just a few simple prompts, building a full scale web or mobile app. And while both of these tools are pretty great. Honestly, whichever one you choose is going to be dependent upon what you're trying to build. Because for the most part, these are two entirely different apps as compared to some of the other vibe coding tools out there. The biggest difference when comparing both of these is the fact that Replit was a different type of tool. It was an online IDE and it's now trying to pivot to being an AI vibe coding tool, whereas Base44 comes out of the box. So what wins in this case? Going and having a straight direction, being a vibe coding tool from the get-go, or having years of experience with all sort of development atmospheres to actually go and pivot to now being a vibe coding tool. Well, that's the question we're gonna try and answer today by jumping right into both these platforms, giving them the same prompt and seeing which of them comes out on top, at least for your specific project. So let's jump right into it here. So as we can see here from the base 44 screen, this is the prompt that we're gonna choose. Let's build a personal finance budgeting software for building and managing all my subscriptions, including ones I've deleted, canceled, restarted, etc., with a focus on easy user design, mobile optimization, and automatic sorting. Now we're gonna take that prompt here and we're just gonna choose the model that we like. We can choose between Claude 4.5 Opus, Gemini 3 Pro, or Claude 4.5 Sonnet. Let's do Gemini 3 Pro just to keep the playing field fair. We're gonna go ahead and hit submit here and it's automatically gonna start building this for us. Now let's hop over to Replit, check on the interface, see how it compares and give it the exact same prompt. So Replit looks a little bit different in that it doesn't make you necessarily just give the prompt right away and then start building. It does make you sign up first. It does make you go through a few onboarding steps before eventually getting to this screen. And it's interesting because it works quite a bit different than how Bolt or Base44 do because we have different tabs here like build, design, start designing the fastest way to a visual prototype with no backend, the fastest way to getting a web app, mobile app, data app, three game, etc. There are a whole bunch of different options here and your apps and published apps are visible on the left hand side and for free you get 10 apps. That's right, it makes you choose a plan first before automatically putting you on the free plan, which is very interesting. So we're gonna go ahead and hit start chat here with the same prompt we gave to base 44. And as we can see already, the interface is quite a bit different than what we would see with base 44. It says, I'll help you build a personal finance budgeting software focused on subscription management. So we don't have a preview on the right hand side yet. We just have the AI chat. We have what it is, a modern web app. It has the following features. Get notified when the app is ready. It's gonna say probably about 20 seconds of work. And it says, I've created a feature list based on your request. How do we wanna continue? Do we want to build the entire app, which is gonna take 20 plus minutes? Or do we want to start with a simple design where we can see the design prototype first, then iterate on visuals or features? This is the biggest difference between Replit and Base44. Base44 is probably already done our prototype, whereas Replit is going to build the entire app in 20 plus minutes here. We're gonna go ahead and just probably build the entire app because I mean, that's what we want it to do. And we're gonna hit start building, but we're gonna check and see what we have here. So this is the actual agent tool for Replit. We can choose to control the agent's level of autonomy. High means it generates and executes tasks on the list, reviews the code changes, expands the review scope. It does not plan and complete new work independently and app testing is disabled. So we can see here, we can use the high powered model and this is gonna use Claude Opus 4.5. Now, no matter what AI model we're actually using here, the results are probably going to be similar unless you're somebody who really is looking into the nitty gritty details and can spot the differences in the way they code, etc. But in terms of just interfaces here for no code users, this really won't make much of a difference. So we're going to choose autonomous and we're going to hit start building. And as we can see, it's going to jump right into it. And now the interface looks a lot more like something we would see on Bolt or Base44. We have preview will be available soon. Press publish and we have the chat on the left-hand side here. But the biggest thing, it's gonna take 20 plus minutes to create this full app. It has just started building. So we can see it's given us all the features, but if we hop over to base 44, it's probably already done. It thought for 14 seconds before figuring out the data structure, the design, the components, the logic, and then wrote out everything for the code. We can see I've got all my code files here. If I wanna go and click in and see what they look like here, I can click into that. And we can see the exact code that's being used. This is some of our data. Data here. We have our layout. Now I should mention here that we can't actually edit the code unless we are on a pro plan for base 44. But if you're somebody who doesn't have any coding experience, this probably won't be an issue because you'll mainly be prompting base 44. But if we head back to our preview over here, we can see that we have the entire app already built out. Subflow, dashboard, total spend, active subs, projected. It's already put in some data here and I can go ahead and interact with it as needed. Netflix, $10, monthly, entertainment, next billing, save subscription. And it's going to actually save that 
that to our real backend because it went ahead and actually created a full backend for us. In literally less than a few minutes, it's gone ahead and created a fully mobile optimized subscription manager for us. We can check to see what it looks like if we hit the switch to mobile view here. And now we can see this is completely mobile optimized all within this one singular prompt, even complete with the bottom bar here, this plus icon, a settings tab. This is all stuff that's come from that single prompt. So if we swap back to the desktop version here, we can see that it's pretty much created exactly what I've asked for. We can sort by cost, name, date, etc., and then just continue to prompt it with AI. This took maybe a minute, maybe a minute and a half, and we've got a full thing already built for us. So currently it is just the one pager, but this is exactly what I've asked for with my one simple prompt. Now let's go ahead and take a look back at Replit to see how it's doing on its project, which has probably had, I wanna say, probably four or five minutes to go here now. So at this point it has started building and it has only just written the first two cards. As we can see, it's working here and preview will be available soon, but it is, to be honest, taking quite a bit longer to write everything out. We've got these files created so far theme toggle category icon and we can see what it's working on in real time here building all the app screens and looks creating ways to manage app data connecting parts and testing everything so it's going and really building everything out and as we can see just by clicking into this we can see what's being written in real time but the biggest difference here is that Replit is taking quite a bit longer it's estimated that for this pretty simple app it's going to take 20 minutes to do which is pretty cool it's very impressive here but the biggest difference is that you don't feel like you're building a prototype as much as having Replit just build everything for you. And I know that sounds a little bit confusing because this is a vibe coding tool. The AI platform should be coding for me, right? Well, there's a little bit of a difference here. The biggest thing is we can notice is that we're not getting like a prototype that we can then iterate upon. It's just going to go ahead and build the full scope of the entire app of what it thinks based off of my simple prompt here. Base44 was able to do that in just a, a minute or two. And then if we need to make adjustments, we can then prompt on top of it. But Replit is going and building all of the app screens and looks, creating ways to manage the app data, connecting everything. It's going and building many filler bars and calendar views and history timelines and empty states, things that we didn't necessarily ask for. So it may not be that it's just taking longer because it's being more thorough, but rather it's building a lot more features on top of what we've asked for that weren't necessarily required. Base44, on the other hand, has things a lot more in line. It's everything out of the box. There's not much that needs to be done. If I want things changed here, I just need to continue to prompt, or I could use the visual edit to select exactly what I want changed. Now, the reason I do say Base44 kind of has everything out of the box is because if I go to the dashboard view, you can see that I don't have to be somebody who's very techy to understand how this works. I can see my overview, I can see my users, my data, my analytics, domains, security, etc, etc. Everything here is designed from an interface perspective to be super easy for someone who's non-techy. The drawback with Base44 is that on the free plan, you don't get the ability to customize. Now, this could be a bit frustrating because for somebody like myself who does know how to code, if I wanna go and customize and tweak things on Base44, I would have to upgrade to a paid plan to do that. But the difference is it's not designed for the developer. The main user it's trying to market towards is somebody who doesn't need to develop at all because they're just using the AI model to continue to prompt new changes. If I wanted colors changed, I'd prompt the AI model. If I wanted to add a new page, for instance, I'd prompt the AI model. There's no reason reason for me at this point, if I'm assuming that I'm a non-developer, to have to change anything outside of the AI model. And if I did, I'd have to upgrade to the paid plan. On Base44 side, it's actually quite easy because if I want to publish this app and share it with anyone, I can get a temporary domain or just a custom domain, as we can see here. I can set it to have public access or make it have login required, and then I can just publish an app. And then just like that, Anybody could come and view this app on the web and that's it. I can continue to prompt it and iterate and build upon it. Base44 is designed to be that all-in-one SaaS solution. You shouldn't have to take it off of the platform with Base44. Now, let's go check in on Replit again. So Replit is still building our application here and it's probably been about, I wanna say 10 minutes. It's created the page components. It's marked task one as complete and it's still going and building new forms and adding use effects to reset the form when the props change and it's going and writing documentation. Okay, so we actually have some sort of interface here that I can look at and it's been about 11 or 12 minutes here and we can see it's being written in real time. So as it's writing, you'll notice the interface is going to change and these basic things on the side here that don't necessarily work, just like I mentioned here, as you saw, they now work. So it's kind of making the interface nice in real time. But the big thing here 
the biggest difference between base 44 and Replit, other than the fact that Replit takes significantly longer to get that interface built, is that if I want to go and publish my app, I have to upgrade to a paid plan. You get monthly credits for the Replit agent, you get a free .com domain up to $13, and to publish and persist live apps, you have to upgrade to the paid plan. Base 44, on the free plan alone, I get that free .com domain, even if it's some random domain, I get to publish it for free, and it doesn't take 20 minutes to build the application. So ultimately, this is the question that you have to ask yourself when comparing Replit versus Base44. It's what type of experience do you want to have? Because as we can see here, we've gotten two completely different experiences. With Base44, I used one singular prompt and got in literally less than a minute, the first version, just a little one pager that did exactly what I asked, completed, that I could publish, edit in the back end, etc. Replit has taken significantly longer, but it's been a lot more thorough, adding in not just a dashboard, but the subscription the calendar, the history, it shows me when it was created, all that stuff. We have a day and a night mode. Add subscription here is a little bit more in depth. We have categories, statuses, etc. This feels a lot more polished per se, but it's taken significantly longer to do so. And to actually publish it, I have to pay. So we're a bit split down the middle. If you're a developer who wants to customize things, you can do it on the Replit plan for free, but you can't publish it. On the Base44 one though, you have to pay to edit the code, but publishing is absolutely free. So pick your poison. From my perspective, there is a vastly different person who's going to use Replit versus going to use Bolt. Replit is a much more abrasive experience. If you're somebody who has no coding experience whatsoever, well, you're going to get a much more detailed app, but to be able to publish it, to be able to make changes to a backend if it is created and all that stuff, it's going to be a lot more difficult. This is going to offer more customization, but it's not going to be as user-friendly and it's not going to have everything you need out of the box. Let's compare that to Base44 where it's a lot more user-friendly. Base44 kind of understands that we don't want a fully perfected interface with every single feature that we could possibly think of filled out and then taking 10 or 15 minutes just to build those features out because it just built exactly what we asked for. And then if we want anything after the fact, we can just prompt it now and publish it for free. If we want customization, we upgrade to the pay plan. But the dashboard, including all of our back end, all of our front end, and everything that we need to actually get this app shareable and online is here and super user-friendly. Replit, while it is doing exactly what we've asked, is still going. It's still optimizing agent memory and it's been about 20 minutes now. This is what the mobile optimization looks like for SubTracker on Replit as compared to Base44. We can see things that everything isn't quite centered and we have the dashboard subscriptions at the bottom here, but this kind of feels wonky in terms of the placement of things. If we swap over to Base44 and look at the mobile version of that, we can see here that it's completely mobile optimized. It's card format changes. It's its status has changed, the interface itself completely shifts to match our requirements on a mobile device. This feels like it's squishing everything from the desktop version onto the mobile version, and it doesn't even allow us to publish things. And it seems like Replit is finally done so I can actually compare these apples to apples. I mean, take a look for yourself. This is the interface we have from Replit that took 15 minutes to do, maybe longer depending upon how long I've been talking. We've got four pages, a dashboard, subscriptions, calendar, history. A lot of these things I did not ask for, but it went ahead and built them anyway, taking significantly longer to do so. It put it in a dark mode with a light mode. Yeah, it looks it looks all right. We can pause things and update the statuses accordingly. Sorting, if I go to the renewals, I can't really, okay, if I go to subscriptions and I, I edit, I can edit those on the fly. If I pause the subscriptions, where do I? Okay, I can see here it's paused and then unpaused. Calendar doesn't really show me the subscriptions. I think it's these bolded ones. Yeah, I'm not really sure how the calendar feature is functioning here because it says zero due this month. Okay. Okay, not the best in my opinion. This is, for honestly how long it took, this is a little bit disappointing of a result. And if I can't even publish it, yeah. It's not a good look. Base44, I'm a lot more lenient on in it not having as many features. It doesn't have the calendars. It doesn't have as complex editing. As we can see here, this is pretty much your edit subscription, all that stuff. But it also didn't take 15 minutes. It took a minute and a half to do. So I'm much more lenient on this. And if I wanted to go and actually make those new feature requests, I'm sure it would just probably take me a few more prompts here to actually get that to being a live version. And if I want to make this live, all I have to do is hit publish and publish the app and anybody could access it. I don't have to pay for it. Now, if you think me judging these apps based on a single prompt is a little bit unfair, I raise you this. Most users, when they're coming to an application, are going to give it one prompt and then judge it based on that one prompt. And 
based on the experiences I've had with both Base44 and Replit just now, I had to wait 15 minutes on Replit for what we got, and I had to wait less than a minute for what we have here. So for the most part, I'm leaning in Base44's favor simply because of the fact that it got exactly what I asked for done in less than a minute and allows me to simply go ahead and view everything related to it from the overview, data, domains, etc. This is much, much more beginner friendly. Not only that, I can publish it for free. Publishing it on Replit being on a paid plan feels like I wouldn't really host anything. I couldn't see building a full app from scratch and then hosting it through Replit. I could definitely see myself doing that with base 44 and it's a lot more user friendly now the only drawback here for base 44 is that if i did want to adjust the code i of course would have to upgrade to a paid plan but Given the fact of that there's no errors in actually building this, for the most part, I could just continue to prompt this and probably be fine. And just prompting one single feature at a time, I feel confident that Base44 can actually handle it, whereas I don't want to have to wait another five to 10 minutes just to build a new feature into Replit. So for me, I'd have to say that Base44 is the clear winner here. But if you want time to experiment with things, if you want to try learning a new you know, coding language, that sort of thing, if you want a space that you can really experiment in building these things out without ever actually putting it online, Replit definitely has the full expansion. It built a lot more features in, it has a lot more code, it's really going and being a well-rounded system, but it's a lot more complex and technical with the ability to actually adjust the code. So if you want to have that ability to tinker, Replit could be great for you, but for most people who just want a tool where they can just prompt the AI, Base44 is the clear winner here. So which one's going to be the right one for you? Do you think I was being too harsh with just judging them on one prompt? Remember, that's what most users are going to judge them on anyways, so we're just putting ourselves in the shoes of those users. Well, based on what we've seen here today, I think Base44 is probably just the best right out of the box for somebody who doesn't really have any coding experience and just wants to prompt their way to actually getting a full app developed. Replit feels fun as a place to actually go and experiment with things and adjust the code on the fly but I have to pay to actually publish something, which kind of defeats the purpose of having a vibe coded software if I can't share the software I vibe coded. So let me know your thoughts. If you want to try this out for yourself, of course, we're going to leave a link down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, my name is Josh Mountain, and I'll see you in the next one.